Smurf, that has to be a problem. It is going to be banned away, though. It makes a lot of sense after that Lulu. Zillion Gangplank, no surprises there, but you can see the Anivia still available. Cassidy still available. Kira's champion pool untouched apart from that Lulu that he really managed to hurt Kami on. Elise taken out of the way, and that's a blue side Elise, Elise ban, so Rainbrain. Not wanting to take that one into the jungle. Alistair going to be the final ban here of the CIS region. A lot of picks still available. And this is dangerous. Locking in the Mundo first up. We mentioned the Anivia Mundo interaction. Yep. And it could now be on full display. The CIS decide to lock that one in. My my kind of feelings about this is, will the LJL team oh, go catch. for uh, the Soraka here with the Mundo? It is one of the compositions I feel like Soraka is actually viable with. So Mundo becomes very tanky, very unkillable. If you pair it with a Malphite, it covers for the lack of engage out of the jungle and support. Depends on what the CIS region pick up as their top laner. They're not going to show it yet. Do have the opportunity for the flex with that Tom Kench. And now Gragas out of the jungle is very standard, but there's so much for Rain Rain to pick. He's yeah. still got options for Rek'Sai. He's got uh, a Kindred is available, but we haven't seen much of that at all this week. No, not so much. But of course, Lee Sin's still there as well if Rain Rain wants to up the tempo there just a little bit, but he has been playing a fair bit of Gragas, taking that away from him does make a lot of sense. Tom Kench there as well. Surprised not to see the Anivia. Can be picked up by Seros now if he wants to. I mean, Glacial Storm, Giant Circle seems to be a lot like what he's into. Yeah, it does seem to be very much the case, but uh, speaking of this, Tom Kench, this is something that the Star Ladder team have picked up alongside the likes of the Tristana on Lex. Lex has pretty much been playing Tristana or Vayne, yep. and if he can get either of those, which both are available, I think I think the CIS team could be in a good spot here. They already have a fair amount of protection and disengage. <laughs> Rainbrain hovering the Blitzcrank. Not entirely sure whether that one will go through. Only one second to go, though. Jax is going to be the option here. Ebby taking a different route. Lex, I just love it. Always hovering the Fiddlesticks. <laughs> I just Ever wanted to lock man. it in. You know, like Wits and Fiddlesticks it works so well in the um, it, Ultimate it Bravery, but probably not going to be locked away. One thing that uh, I want to look at here with the LJL team is the fact that as of yet, no primary engage coming on their lineup. They have Mundo for a slow, they have Jax's follow-up with yep. the Counter-Strike. At this point, what they're looking to play is a Jax split push and then a Mundo kind of front line for the rest of the four people on their team. It d does depend on the support champion that comes out here. Uh, Dara, we have seen playing a lot of Thresh. That kind of counts if you look at a pick style on the other the other four members and will allow Jax to have a little bit of freedom when it comes to the split pushing. So still not too worried about the LJL team, but it is certainly something you've got to look at because I'm imagining Malphite is going to get picked away on the other side here to go up against the Jax. And that now gives the Star Ladder team a fair amount of presence in team fights, especially if this Vayne gets locked in. And now they have somebody that can just clean up the pieces. Yep, the secondary choice here for Lex, of course, does like the Tristana a lot, but it was earlier on today that he managed to pick up the victory on the Vayne. And of course, he just builds the same items. It's sort of like he's doing the same <laughs> thing, but, you know, his tumble doesn't go quite as far as the old rocket jump. Anivia now the hover, though. No surprises for Seros, as he hasn't actually picked that one up just yet here at the IWCA, but he's spoken about it before. This guy has a massive champion pool. Can play basically anything that has any sort of circle involved in it, as far as the skill shot is concerned. Braum there is going to be the hover. A fantastic pair up with the Lucian there in the bottom lane. And Mueki, this guy's Lucian is terrifying. <laughs> it really is. I mean, Lucian is strong enough as it is. You put somebody on that champion that can utilize the kit as well as Mueki has been over the last few days, and uh, you pretty much have a recipe for success. If this Anivia gets locked in, this is an LJL team that while they would be happy fighting, okay, uh, changes almost everything well. because now they almost don't want to fight. Because what they're looking now to do is keep a little bit of distance with Mundo as frontline and buy time for Jax. They don't really want to engage anymore, but there is this essence of poke with the Lucian, with the Ezreal here. It's very interesting. It's almost like they've gone for this like 4-1, have the Jax permanently split push and then kite and poke. Yeah. Now with the Ezreal, if he does decide to go for something like that frozen gauntlet, Iceborne Gauntlet, even. Yeah, and this was a style that the LJL team actually played during the farewell games. Uh, they played the Ezreal with the Jax, with Lucian and Braum. It's only the Mundo that is different here, and that exactly is what they were looking to do. Yeah. Just poking from a range, buying time for Evie in that top lane. He's very comfortable with the split push game. We'll see, however, whether he can do it against Smurf, who I feel like has been doing it the best out of any player here at the IWCA. Yeah, it's exactly right. And the thing that's really, really strange is it's completely changed what they want to do 
with this team comp, but went from just come at us. We're just going to continue farming out these waves. We're going to become huge. The Anivia is going to be far too difficult to deal with in the late game. But then turn it all around with this sort of difficult to manage kite composition as Saros and Maweki are just swapping champions over and over again. I have a feeling, Saros, you're going to be playing the Ezreal, man. You understand <laughs> that one. I think so. And, and to, to provide some extra context to this, when they played this, it was an AD Ezreal. So at this point, you look at the lineup for the LJL. They are stacking a fair amount of uh, attack damage right now. Into a Malphite. Into a Malphite and a Gragas and a Tom Kench. So if this game goes late, there may be no chance of chunking through the health and the armor that the style out of team will have. You look at the other side, very much more balanced. You have Engage, you have Wave Clear coming from the Victor yeah. that was Kira's last pickup. You have the Vayne to clear up in the late game team fights, and a whole lot of protection coming from it as well. A lot more well rounded, but that's not to say that if the LJL team are playing to the top of their ability, that the Japanese cannot look to uh, utilize this poke composition and keep the uh, style of the team at a distance. I think so much has to do with Evie in this game. If with his Jax he can build hybrid, make sure that he has you know, the extra magic damage from A, the Rage Blade, or B, that Hextech Gunblade, and is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Malphite and push him out of the lane, that is going to be the big deal. Because this poke comp, it's not going to be able to do too much in a siege situation necessarily. It would be able to continue to push waves in, stop engages. But what else are you going to do? You need that Jax to draw people towards that top, top side of the map and create these man advantages around the rest of it. Oh, for sure. If at any point Evie is not able to one versus one, the Malphite and potentially the Victor, Victor's probably just going to clear the waves. But if he cannot take that one versus one, the Japanese team may very well just lose the game straight there. Yeah, and we'll see whether it's going to be on Rain Brain in order to get around the map and make things happen. But we are on to the Rift, ladies and gentlemen. LJL taking on the CIS. Seros moving down this mid lane, of course, has played a lot of Ezreal in the past. Doesn't have a Rune Glaive this time around. It's not that ridiculous no. build. Thank goodness. But Ezreal's still strong in his own right. In fact, can build a Rage Blade, and I believe on this patch, stacks it with his Mystic Shot. Which is pretty, pretty ludicrous, I'm, to be honest. I'm interested to see whether he does go for the Rage Blade or whether he goes uh, a little bit more focused on the likes of the Iceborne Gauntlet a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, whether he goes for the tier build to stack into a Man Immune. Oh, with there the change to Iceborne Gauntlet, is it still a decent idea on the Ezreal? What with the fact that it sort That's of scales with your, your armor based on the size of that slow field? Or does he just need that much slow and it's fine? I, it is one of the most annoying things to play against. Minions the problem with doing that kind of Iceborne Gauntlet poke style is the thing that always has beaten poke throughout the entirety of League of Legends is hard engage. No, it's just Malphite, basically, yeah, exactly. isn't it? <laughs> and that's where I'm getting to, Max, is that uh, if you want hard engage, there's one champion that does it better than anybody else. Uh, it's called Malphite with I'm an unstoppable force. sitting on a pedestal right now just saying, yes, I am the rock man. <laughs> I am the one to take into Summoner's Rift against this composition. Saying that, unstoppable force on an Ezreal isn't, exo uh, isn't always the uh, most consistent of engage. That is true. Arcane shift pretty handy in that shift department. Away. But Relentless uh, Pursuits there as well, Leaf Strike. I mean, they have some opportunities. Stand behind me for Dara. Rain Brain soaks it in the face, doesn't care about it because he's Mundo. <laughs> oh, Seros actually going aggressive on Akira here. Right up close and personal. Another auto attack may do it, but there's the flash. And already Seros with all the pressure. Yeah, I mean, if there's one kind of style here that's going to do quite well against Kira, who wants to wait until later in the game, especially on a champion like Victor, just get through the laning phase, it's going to be an AD heavy champion that's going to be able to poke and harass Kira out of lane here. You can see level two already given over to Seros. This is hard zoning. Oh, yeah. From Seros, the point at which you can stand still behind the enemy minion line and they can't do anything about it is a big worry for the early levels. But Kira should be okay. I do expect Imajka to come around mid lane, at least ward up for Kira and just keep him safe. Well, Kira has hit the level two now. Let's have some points into that Q, so we'll be able to get himself a shield at least to try and help with this, these trades. On the bottom side of the rift, it was level two hit first by the Star Ladder squad, so they're able to create a bit of a lead for themselves, but has been evened up ever so slightly by Maweki and Dara. We'll see what they can do. Of course, Vayne generally considered okay in lane against Solution, considering the uh, piercing light can be dodged. Rain Brain coming in for the first gank. Lands the... Banjo. Yeah, after a while, the Banjo coming in. I was Ukulele. wondering which skin it was in the middle of that team fight, but Smurf able to get away underneath his turret, but has wasted the flash already. In comes Dimashka. Wasn't yeah. expecting the shift. Whoa, lots of burst damage comes out. The heal from Seros still has the flash. 
been able to answer back quite well. Thunderlord's doing a fair bit of work there too. And this is one of the reasons why we have just a, a many times... I'm going to hold this because Rainbrain is going to find Dimashka. Mundo's not exactly the best champion when it comes to finding somebody in their jungle, but if Gragas is under 200 health, certainly can do the job. Uh, Ezreal in the middle lane has found himself there just in general different periods of the game and whenever he is viable in the middle lane his E just cannot be overlooked it's so safe when it comes to escaping ganks Speaking of escaping ganks, Smurf, no flash this time. He's gonna have to try and oh, it's micro bring around his way the out. Rosie at the moment as Smurf. The minions just trying to let him know which way he's gonna go. Evi just going one v one here. Smurf just continues to do it. Rainbrain, uh, where, where are we going? Evi's gonna oh, the flash in from Rainbrain though. He's looking for it. Weaves the cleaver. Or oh, the banjo through. No more funny business from the Rock man. <laughs> Rainbow was just sat there like, wait, I just want to see how this one pans out. Like, I want to Severe test Benny Hill this. situation <laughs> right there, stress. <laughs> that is possibly the funniest level 3 gank I think I've ever seen out of a, a, a jungler. But it does highlight a significant problem with Mundo in the jungle. Is Yes, he will get that very tanky, but in the early onset, he is still fairly, uh, fairly squishy before he's gone back to buy and has no hard crowd control. So unless Jax lands that Counter-Strike, it's difficult to get that kill. It was fortunate for, uh, for Smurf for a little while that Evie was bounced around in between three or four ranged minions and kind of yep. assisted him for a fairly long time, but certainly does highlight a problem that's just we're going to keep tracking throughout the day. Yeah, well, we'll see how he does go. Of course, Malphite now falling behind, but can do his job with relatively low amounts of items. He will have an R button by level six if he makes it there. That is pretty much what he needs. Kira with very low mana here in the mid lane, but Seros unable to bully him out all that much. Dimashke still waiting for another gank. The flash is available from Seros, but of course no heal. Mystic Shot is going to help him take down some of these minions. Kira continues to take harass Seros. Just knows his way around the Ezreal, most definitely. At this point, I'm not even sure how worth it is for Dimashke to be coming mid lane. I mean, they know Flash is still up, they know he has his E on a very short cooldown, so uh, until at least Gragas can kind of trade his ult for the Flash. Yeah, that's moving past the minions here, Dimashke in a lot of trouble. The last Mystic Shot may have been almost enough. Dimashke, even in a 1v2 situation, Saros is more than happy to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I kind of want to see Rainbrain now that he's got that first kill, just peel back into his own jungle. Just continue farming. Uh, it's the difference of what we saw between Carbon and uh, I believe it was Thayek in game two yes. doing, where Thayek just stayed in the jungle until level six, got it at six minutes and just became insanely tanky. Whereas Carbon was looking to gank lanes and it just wasn't working time and time again. This time Rainbrain has got one kill, but now just go, go and power farm your way up to level six. You've already got the gold advantage, maintain it because your lanes aren't really gonna die this, this early on. And this is what Mundo's always wanted to do as well. It's just sort of hang out wherever he wants, farm up as much as he can and then just become completely unkillable towards the end of the game and do weirdly large amounts of damage with only tank items. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that, that pretty much is the way it goes. It's bothersome, man. Like, why does he do so much work? Burning Agony really does tend to stack up. I mean, it, it's a good job he's not corporate Mundo. He's on vacation right now, so he shouldn't be working at all. Well, that's a really but, good uh, point. No briefcases to come out, just banjos. <laughs> I don't know how he has so many as well. Where do you keep them? Is he running a banjo stand? Maybe he is still working. I He's mean, just working in Hawaii, selling I, banjos. I must admit it. I realized I said banjo earlier, and I'm taking you down this uh, dark path of saying banjo, and it Instead should be of ukulele. ukulele. Yeah. I think it's a ukulele anyway. I'm going to have angry tweets if we don't. But he did <laughs> throw it at a rock, and it didn't exactly like break. So whatever that is, it is a very strong ukulele. That's true. Oh, Zeros taking a lot of damage here. Tides have been turned just a little bit from Kira, but not going to be able to do it for too much longer with that mana bar. You can see the sheen is being built towards here by Sarah, so by the looks of things, judging by that uh, sapphire crystal. Could be wrong. Could be anything else. I mean, Catalyst of the Protector, maybe. Could be. I Probably mean, I, not. I'm not so sure about Rod of Ages uh, on uh, Ezreal. Yep. Or Frozen Heart. Probably oh. not great either. <laughs> I, I imagine it'll probably go towards uh, some, one of the Sheen items, but with extra cooldown reduction, wow, Cirrus. Yep, just Arcane shifts away, it's fine. Again, just very safe in this middle lane. Uh, and of course, now that Sheen gives extra cooldown reduction, we'll kind of assist here as well. Very good point. Not so much for the AP champions anymore. I mean, you can get Lich Bane's second item on AP, it's fine. Uh, me and Spawn were talking about this a little bit earlier. As, uh, 
We'll give you that extra cooldown reduction if you're not going Morellos, but not in this case. It's AD. He's a, he just wants Sapphire Crystals. That's all it is. He's man trying to cosplay Tarek right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Or he's Rise. I don't know. Rise with a sword? <laughs> Very confusing. Let's see what it turns into. Most likely that Iceborne Gauntlet, but I'd just like to see the Essence Reaver Trinity Force, just because 40% CDR, fantastic on Ezreal just in general. I mean, you don't have the slow, but you just do so much more damage. That's fair. Could uh, be interesting. I, Probably can't utilize the crit quite as quite enough. I can't really argue with that. I just, just like that combination of items. The, the thing is, Ezreal's one of those champions that you can just buy a lot of items on, and, and something well, in his kit stress. kind of uh, kind of works with it. So it, it's all good. There's a, there's a lot that Cirrus could be doing right now, but what he has been doing, or uh, hasn't been doing so well actually in the last few uh, minutes of this game, is hasn't been pressuring the lead. I mean, Victor just went back, but it's top lane. Brain Brain is looking for Smurf, has his ult and his flash, should be able to get out. Yeah, Ukulele is going to land Smurf, he's going to use the flash. There's the turnaround, wants to try and grab Eevee, but it was the tower on Rain Brain. He's going to sort it out, Rain Brain actually oh. taking up the minions as well. Good guy, Jungler. And the Counter-Strike is going to clear out this wave as well. So Eevee flirting with death just a little bit. Cheeky devil. He's going to be okay, but Smurf forced to go back as well. Double teleport, both of them available, these top laners, so... Made his teleport to lane, but it is Smurf holding onto it, wants to be able to use that ultimate. But there's another Chaos Storm here in the mid lane. Saros getting pressured all the way out. Deathray lands. Heal down from Saros because he thought that might hit him. Dangerous times in the mid lane, and he's forced back one more time. Another big trade in the mid lane. This time it's, it's going now towards Kira significantly. I mean, every time Sira steps up, he really has no combat stats, is the problem. Two Sapphire Crystals. He's got a lot of mana, though, man. Yeah, you can throw out. Qs, and he's got a blue buff, actually. So he can throw out spells forever. They're just not doing very much damage. When you compare that to... Uh, okay, his ult ult damage. That's fair. Yeah, True Shot Barrage did some work. Especially if it hits only Kira. Yep. First None up. About reduced damage. Oh, able to get further up. Gravity Field, though, is going to land. Lots of damage, but... Of course, no Chaos Storm. The last Death Ray putting him down to about 220 health, but he's going to be fine. It's his way around the amount of damage a Victor is capable of as well, does Seros, by the looks of things. And Rainbrain oh. hit by about 6 CS as far as that farm is concerned. But after picking up the first blood, possibly could have transitioned that further. Counter-Strike down one more time as Smurf taking a lot of damage. Doesn't have the flash anymore. Wow, this Rage Blade is doing some work. <laughs> And that'll pick up the kill. No unstoppable force and no flash means a dead rock. And that is a big problem here for Smurf when you look at it. I mean, it was a good play from Evie on uh, the sides of things because I'm pretty sure he just sat on that pickaxe for a very long time. Did have that blasting one in his inventory, so it was very clear what he was going for. But to, uh, when you look at that top lane, Smurf was only itemizing. Oh half my god! Now. He can do so much damage just in general. That Rain was Rain one is here as well. Bonk, like right into him and. Pink Bonk is auto attack plus in power. Oh, okay. Just so you know. Oh, Kira once again taking a lot of damage with the Chaos Storm up again. Forced to flash out of the way is Zeros. The Ignite still burning down, but not going to be enough. <laughs> True Shot Barrage not available, and Kira completely out of mana. He's going to go back in full vision, the LJL. I mean, he's not got too many more options at this point. Uh, he can just kind of even this way back out bottom lane. Dara wants to go aggressive. Devonko is here with Lex. Yeah, final hour lands. But oh my goodness, so, so close with that Glacial Fissure. In the end, nom nom, see you later, Vayne. And this is the problem when trying to engage on an AD carry when Tom Kench is stood right there. Especially if you're going to use a teleport like uh, the Japanese team just did. Evie uses that big cooldown of a summoner, leaves Mundo in the top lane, which means that there's no smite available for the LJL. Now they're going to try and do a dragon, but Rain Brain, uh, but Dimashka is already here. LJL, they have to peel back away from this dragon for now. It looks like Evie's going to try and get it. Does take that smite. Yeah, he's got so much damage that it sort of counts as a smite, having the empower there. Dimashka not going to be able to get here. There's the Abyssal Voyage. The fish not going to be here quite soon enough. Wow. I swear his tongue went the wrong direction just then. We'll need an instant replay. That did look like I it. looked very odd, but did manage to land it. Huh. A fake out. Fake I like it. Fake throws a fake tongue. Oh, Evie's yeah. been discovered in the bottom lane. Oh, Stopped dear. Recall. That is That's not where you're back, boys and girls. Oh, dear.
Yeah, that was just... Evie's been playing this a little bit risky at this point. Going for the Dragon, yes, they ended up getting it, but it, it left Rain Rain top lane, and, and what that means is there's a lot of freedom from the CIS squad to just go into the enemy jungle. Uh, and that's one thing we saw them do fairly frequently yesterday was Dimashka, when he knew he was available to go into the enemy jungle, always counter, always get whatever they could. Here is the yeah. replay. What? Ha! Huh. I want to know how he did that. That's super cool. Magic. That is called supreme support mechanics. <laughs> he can even make his skill shots go in the right direction, I, whether he wants them to or not. I don't Stress. even. I don't even know what to make of that. To be honest. That was awesome. <laughs> that was very weird. You know those moments where you realize just I love League of Legends. Has a that magnet, was one of those moments. Magnet attached to his tongue, <laughs> so just like whips it around. Oh, that'd feel weird. Okay, never mind. I'm having flashbacks to when I was very, very young. I don't even want to know where that's going. I'm going to move on to see us getting another blue buff right now. Because again, it's all about the mana. He's had that sheen for a little while. Uh, what that results in is Kira is just going to E and Q him every single time he gets into this lane. Because Victor can stand behind the minions. Ezreal can't really do that because that's exactly where the uh, the, the laser across the floor is going to go. It yeah. allows Victor to push. If Ezreal stood there, he has to either burn his E or take the damage. And that's just a very tough matchup here. And it's why Cirrus is starting to struggle because he's just taking too much damage in the lane and can't survive. Oh, Cirrus. Once again, he's going to use that true shot barrage to destroy this minion wave. See? Straight through the minions. The Zerus gets clipped. Now he has to look to back away. But two shot barrage every time it's on cooldown, available at that mid lane, will kind of help the push in Ezreal's game once in a while. It's a really sneaky essence flux, though, that hit Kira there. Like, did, did a fair bit of damage. Like, you can see the LGL managing to hold on to this bottom turret. 3 CS down is Mueki in what could be classed as a difficult lane matchup. Still not entirely solved, to be honest, but. Static Shiv does help Vayne out a lot as far as that extra harassment away from his concern. But in comes Rain Brain there looking for it to Monko. Not a lot of places to run right now. He's going to get stunned up. The Great Health is going to be there. Glacial Vision's down. Do they have the damage to finish off the cap? If they do, Lex now trying to do some work. Gets exhausted. Everyone's diving. Piercing light right through the face of the Vayne. LJL with a double kill bot lane. And finally, the laning phase is being blown open. It was a very prolonged one, 15 minutes. Meanwhile, while that was going on, the middle lane, there was a kill from Kira onto Cirrus. The damage seemed to have just got too strong. I think we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Yeah, here we go. Cirrus actually eat in for this engage. Oh, dear. Yeah. You don't want to be doing that. I mean, bad just news. eating in while gravity field is available and you have no flash <laughs> is not the best of ideas. I like the True Shot Barrage, though. Right over the top of Kira. Has managed to finish off that Iceborne Gauntlet, so it'll be that frustrating Ezreal kiting everyone around. See I'll how it works out after the change. I'll actually go on record and say it's the most frustrating Ezreal build to play, uh, yeah. play against. Oh, yeah. I hate it. One you Q remember when it was like the Ezreal that. build and he was really popular? And it was yeah. Just long I hated that. Loved yeah. playing it, hated playing against oh, it. I hated playing it, hated playing against it. Everybody else seemed to be able to hit skill shots. That was a problem for well, me. That's the best thing, because you don't even have to hit the first one. All you have to do is be in auto range oh, and then after auto the first ability. Oh. And then, and then, this is the best bit, Max. They get slowed, so every Q <laughs> following will hit them. It's great. It's amazing. It's, it's so annoying to play against. I, I don't know how viable it's going to be in this game, because of the Malphite is the biggest threat here. If Malphite gets on top of the Lucian, uh, and can close that distance. The Ezreal Iceborne Gauntlet isn't really going to do too much to slow yep. him away. So uh, it, it still remains to be seen as we get towards team fights. Well, what is going to be taken here in the bottom lane? Things calming down just a little bit. 1,000 gold is the lead here for the LJL team. And this Rift Scuttler, with nothing else going on, is going to get obliterated. Banjo to the face. <laughs> Vacation. Ukulele to the face. I'm yeah, so well, sorry. it's okay. Rain Brain. Uh, even on his vacation, just continuing. Like I said, no, he's now got a new job, selling ukuleles. Oh my goodness, the culling comes out, though. Kira taking a lot of damage from that one. One more Mystic Shot may have done it. Dimashke now is going to be the focus, since Kira has made his way out of the way. Now the LJL able to try and get a bit of a push on without the wave flip. The thing is, the CIS team still are looking for a little more time. They're very close to having Lex be in a very powerful spot when he gets that second item. 
heavy. He's going to try and catch up on this. And Lex decides he's going to turn. Yeah, trying to turn that one around. Not going to get stunned up by the Counter-Strike, but four people, that's yeah. uh, probably enough to deal with the Vayne. And Lex has just gone, um, this is not fair. And this is exactly what the Japanese team needed to do from here, was they already had a lead. They could see that Vayne was desperately trying to just get the gold for that second item, which if you'll take a look at their inventory, did have after that little bit of farming, but it did cost her a life. Now the dragon is coming up. Lex will not be available, and I don't think that the CIS squad can actually take this dragon fight. I don't think they want to either right now. You can see where Dimashka is on the map, up on the top side. They want to look for objectives in the towers rather than contesting this dragon. That actually has been. The dragons may have had a little bit more of a priority here at the IWCA, especially in this game, as Moeki is able to help take that one down. Rainbrain secures it with the smite, but 19 minutes already, a couple of dragons here for the LJL. We'll see whether they can push forward, create sort of a win condition for themselves with that fifth dragon. We've never spoken about that before, previously. <laughs> never. Promise, fifth dragon win condition? In, in no other Whoa, game. this is so new. I feel Legend. like we just coined it. I mean, at, at this point, there was so much expectation about the Rift Herald, about how, you know, we'll get these one versus one, uh, one versus one bot lanes because we'll have two v2s top. So the reason why we haven't really seen a lot of priority on the Rift Herald, at least in this tournament so far, is that teams haven't been really focused on it as their primary objective to close the game out early. A lot of the teams have been drafting towards the later game, yeah. which obviously Dragon becomes that much better objective for the late game. You stack it up, you get close to that five mark, and then you have to fight against a team that are on four or five dragons. So it becomes that later game winning objective rather than taking a lot of towers very early because towers are so weak right now. You get that Rift Herald, you can get two towers pretty easily from it, but no team has drafted a composition or style towards that really. No, it's true. And of course, you know, the dragon does give you statistics you can't get from items. So when you are sitting on mm. six, it's going to mean so much more just having anything extra of course, especially 6% of your damaging statistics. And then it gets doubled. Yeah. And you get five. Ridiculous. And you get true damage. And then you get burninating the peasants and all that sort of stuff. It's ridiculous. Saras, though, trying to deal with his uh, his lane, which has been shoved in quite effectively. True Shop Barrage is fired off for funsies. Going to be able to discover some wards on its way past. That pink ward towards the blue buff may be taken down. But you can see, speaking of wards, my god, CIS have a heck of a lot on the bottom side of the map. Uh, yes, they do, and Which obviously sort of not where they need it. I, I was going to say, obviously they were looking for that dragon control, but dragon's gone and will be for about the next four and a half, five minutes. So, I mean, it'll help them kind of realize where the Japanese squad aren't, which is great. That is always that's kind of yep. second half of vision control. Uh, which does allow the Star Ladder team to do what they're trying to do here, which is bait somebody out into mid lane so that Malphite can flash ult over the wall. It's an Ezreal that's there, and I would expect that uh, reaction time we'll see a flash ult coming from a fight. Well, we'll see whether Saros can make it work. Oh my... This is what he's done. He needs an Iceborne Gauntlet to create circles. <laughs> now he will never miss a skill shot stress. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. It's genius. This is, this is too It true. matches the barrels, the bombs. The hail of arrows. It does. Everything fits. Oh, yeah. I is this the new Illuminati? It's not a triangle anymore. It's a circle. It is. Or it's a Seros thing. I don't know. It doesn't have to be Illuminati. I don't think it could just be Seros. Oh, true shot barrage. Causing a lot of disruption. And by disruption, I mean damage. <laughs> yeah, fair amount of damage at that. Uh, the analyst test, we're talking about Jack's builds a little bit. Yeah, uh, this from one the last I game. love. Of course, Pulse mentioned it before. Yep. They were talking about that. That was, uh, I believe, even into the Malphite as well, uh, where you're basically giving him as much mixed damage as you can while he's still only got armor. So he just kind of runs away and he's like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I can't actually take this much damage. So uh, expect that 1v1 to be quite one-sided. Yeah, well, they're trying to pull Dara back into the team, but not going to quite get there with the explosive cast. The Cullen comes out for fun. By the looks of things, from Maweki doesn't quite get it on anyone that he wanted to. Slight lead still for the LGL, but we'll see whether they can actually siege down this turret because if this works, this is exactly what this comp wants to do. Yes. Put Jax top and then just poke, 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 poke. Yeah, hold the CIS team at range, oh, but look at the, the engage. Flag. It's going to come. In comes Smurf. Mueki gets obliterated. That's the Chaos Storm down. The engagement is easily enough here from the CIS team. Trying to escape for the rest of the LJL squad. You can see Evie made his way in, used the teleport, but it was a little bit too late. Dara in trouble. Demonko 
finds the jacks. Another ward to lead strike onto. Time. Oh, the devourer is gonna be there. Look at him, he's so hungry. True shot barrage <laughs> does nothing. Dara now in trouble. Barrel not gonna get the slow. Rainbrand and Saras waiting for more. But that's exactly what CIS needed to do. And now they're just gonna go for this Baron. I mean, that's pretty much how that story is gonna go time and time again. As long as that Malphite can come in from the side, the Japanese team didn't really react to the flank from Malphite. And if you don't have your flanks warded on a poke team, it's an easy hard engage option. And the CIS team are taking a very early Baron buff here. They are dropping fairly low, so there may be some cleanup that comes from it. But the CIS team do want to fight Kira, looking for Seros. Yeah, double flashes are gonna come out. Seros with a whole lot of no mana. He's got enough mana items though, it's okay, he he'll does. get it back pretty quickly. It's the blue Ezreal once again. Come on, let's see it again here, Stress. I mean, just watch the mouse fight on the bottom side. It hits everybody that he needs to, stops the front line from moving around and actually putting any kind of pressure on Bane and manages to uh, clip Lucian on that. And from this point, there really is nothing that the Japanese team can do. They don't have a setup to poke. Jax isn't tanky enough to be able to go all in here because look at how healthy Lex is, how healthy Demonko is. Anytime Evie turns around here, he's gonna just get taken out. And you can see even trying to go over the wall, nice flash after the body slam from T Dimashka. Just takes him out. Good, good play out of the CIS squad's uh, back pocket there to make sure that they could stop the attempted poke. That was beautifully played, and that's exactly the answer. It's sort of like what we're seeing is a sort of very clear-cut win condition from both sides as far as what these team cons are built to do. And it's all about getting that flank on Smurf and making sure he can land that uh, unstoppable force. But we'll see whether the vision can improve from the LJL, because that was all about the fact the Starladder team just had all of the vision on that side of the map. They could weave their uh, Malphite through there because they just knew that no one from Japanese side had been around there at all. Yeah, nobody at all. And, you know, the Japanese team right now are playing a very difficult composition, actually, to try and pull off, especially when you take into account, you know, it's an all-star game. Everybody's from different teams. This isn't the kind of comp that these five players will have gone in time and time again on scrims against very high-level yeah. teams. We saw a couple of games like this from them in the farewell games, but it, it's not to the level that you really start to see what you have to do when playing from behind with this, with this kind of composition, because that's now what they're doing. They did have the lead earlier on, and it's kind of okay to play from ahead. Smurf is caught, but the rest of his team's here. Yeah, everyone piles on in. You can see there's the Glacial Fisher doing some work. Smurf Whoa. still alive somehow. They take down Rainbrain. It's already Dara who's fallen. Starlight are now able to turn this one into a turret, and it's just becoming harder and harder for the LJL to do anything. After that one incredible team fight, seems like the CAS are taking full control. Kira just annihilated everybody in that fight with a Chaos Storm. And this is what the CIS team have done like, time and time again, is grab that first Baron of the game, take an inhibitor, and never let up. They've been relentless at closing games once they've had that Baron. It's still a little bit early in this game to close it out. And at this point, they will back away. But certainly in the game earlier today, they were close the game out. I believe it was within like two minutes of getting Baron Bow. So it's going to be later than that, but we'll go for it. Now, this is Smurf just playing his best bait game right now, dragging Moeki and Cirrus around the corner and gets just about everybody in this fight. Follow it up with a Chaos Storm and a Death Laser, and there is no way of getting out of that. That is exactly what the CIS team wants to do. Just crazy. And the fact that Smurf could soak so much damage was ridiculous. This means that Evie now is going to have even more difficult time dealing with this Malphite. And I mean, that's a compositional issue from the Japanese team, is they've stacked so much in the way of AD. Yes, Jax is dealing hyper damage. Uh, there's a Ezreal. little bit yeah. coming from the Ezreal as well, but Ezreal has a fairly low damage build right now. Manimune and Iceborne Gauntlet isn't enough to crack through a two item, uh, two armor item Malphite that has the, uh, the cloak as well. Lucian does not have the ability to crack through that armor either. So yes, there are aspects of that mixed damage, but Evie has to get into the fight, and you just saw what Kira can do to anybody that's standing pretty close. Oh yeah. And he made, it's just made so easy by Smurf as well. As soon as that unstoppable force happens, you can get in there. Abyssal Voyage is being taken. <laughs> Special delivery um, from the Victor towards the top lane. As we do have the CIS region pushing down on that inner turret on the top side of the map. Once again, it's the CIS playing very textbook. These guys, they want to take down all of the strides. Oh, yeah. 
They uh, they do love their tutorial style. They're a little oh, yeah. a little way away from that. You can see Malphite down in the bottom lane against Mundo actually. So teleport is available for CIS. Mundo would have to walk all the way up if there were to be a fight. There are no flanking wards right now, so I don't really expect the CIS team to engage. Especially not without that Malphite. They don't really have that potential outside of a Gragas ultimate coming through. But Smith is going to be fairly happy to just take down the rest of the health on that tower. And again, every tower that falls makes it even more difficult for the LJL team because the lights are going out in their, in their jungle. As soon as the wards drop and the Star Ladder team start closing the gap around the base, there's pretty much nothing that can be done. Yeah, well, and he's still able to push away Smurf, but now he's going to get to a point where he can teleport. True Shot Barrage going through. Zeros trying to chase them down. You can see the LJL still with some fight left in him. Smurf, so many wards to teleport to. A lot of options here for CIS. And minions continue to be cleared, so that was a very successful Baron. Managing to get that inhibitor there in the mid lane for CIS, and now working out where to go next. And here comes Vayne build, but the teleport now coming in. We'll talk about that one later as Smurf does have the unstoppable force. Doesn't want to use it just yet. The turret falls down. LJL, explosive cast goes off to Monko, soaking so much. The Grey Health still there as the culling comes down. Dimash Kate not going to be taken down from that one. The Pope now following through. Condemn gets Evie out of the fight. And they take the turret. CIS, they're able to disengage. Yeah, the CIS team right there. The teleport came in. And it wasn't quite that go moment. Smurf is holding on to his ult until just the right time. Couldn't find multiple carries stacked, couldn't find those high priority targets. And they knew that the super minions in the middle lane would still be causing a problem. So yes, they don't really uh, managed to get that one step closer to closing out the game, but they've taken down the top inhibitor tower. They're going to refocus. Baron is coming up in another 30 seconds, so it's now all about the vision control. A little surprised to see Smurf going to the bottom lane without a teleport. That is a, a bit of a misplay right here. He's going to have to clear this wave and run over very quickly to be around for this Baron fight, but I think he'll just about make it. Kira, on the other hand, is looking for blue buff. So they won't really be able to set this vision up just in time to drag the Japanese team down, but they may get a couple of wards up. Yeah, I have a feeling the ensuing team fight may go in their favor as well. It's exactly what Starladder want to be doing. Lex, he's got a Trinity Force. This is a really interesting triple zeal main build. He needs a Phantom Dance the next, I think. Make sure he builds all of the zeal items that he can possibly get. Oh man, this is one of the worst possible things that can happen. Look at where Smurf is in comparison to the carries of the Japanese team. He was zoning them completely from the rest of his team. And if they tried to close the gap through the jungle and regroup as a team, he would have been able to ult them. This is going to have to be the last fight coming from Japan. CIS are going to turn. Yeah, final hour's been popped here. In jumps Evie. The Condemn is going to go down, but he's not going to be done with just yet. Exploded by the Chaos Storm, as I say that. And Rainbrain does have the ult. He's trying to get some work done, but he just gets exploded. Moeki trying to kite around, and Saros is there as well, but that's two. The two tankiest members of the LJL are already dead. So that only lost Demonko. And Demonko was just there in the front line trying to hold off the carries, and everybody else was dealing with Evie. And as soon as Evie died, there was really no damage threat left in the fight to take out Lex. And Lex did take a lot of damage in that fight from Evie. Let's not uh, be mistaken on that one. The Condemn was good, but it's not enough to keep him alive. But you can see how much... Oh, it was enough to keep him alive, sorry. You can see how much uh, actual protection they have for this fight. And even though Lex has had a fairly quiet game right now, he's still doing enough damage, doing enough cleanup duty in these fights to be uh, a viable threat here as we go later into this game. Yeah, we saw him against Radier as well. Picked up the vein was against the Lucian. He was down 130 CS. Didn't matter. <laughs> no, Just didn't. managed to position in the late game and the rest of his team did so much work around the map. So Lex sort of used to taking a back seat until he's really, really needed, unless he's playing Tristana where they seem to just be able to build comps around him. And he can carry things through, but it's really great to see versatility in the play style of these guys. Kira is having another good game. I'm going to try not to jinx it. Kira the Immortal? I'm, uh, I'm touching the, the wooden table here. I'm yep. just saying he hasn't died yet today. Uh, that could still happen in the next few minutes, but nevertheless, he is having a great game so far on the day. 9-0-9 uh, in two games. That's insane. 
Let's not count our chickens before they hatch, though. That's, uh, That's still still have to close this game out. But Kira is having another great game. A lot of damage, man. Those fights in the enclosed spaces where the chaos storm is just ripping through the Japanese team, so difficult to deal with. Yeah, the setup is really working. And Demonko just says, nope. Culling ain't gonna do nothing. True Shot Barrage ain't gonna do nothing. And Rainbrain, he's heading right underneath the turret, does have the flash to get out. Glacial Fissure is there as Evie's gonna jump in, but man, so much damage from the Star Ladder. There's the unstoppable force. Multiple knockups from Weki and Sarah still alive here in the back line, but once again, the two tanks are dead and nobody's down on the side of the Star Ladder. Demonko doing perfect tanking play with this Tom Kench, and that's why it gets banned against these guys every single time, because he's just so good. So good, and there is so much health right now on the CIS team, so much in the way of resistances that nobody can kill the front line for the CIS team. I mean, the Japanese team cannot do anything to get to the back line, and that means Lex and Kira just have free reign to deal as much damage as they want to in that fight. The CAS team didn't even turn their damage on until a good five or six seconds yeah. in that fight when they managed to get the Malphite ultimate. So, oh, Lex has been caught this time, though. Yeah, Thunderlord does go off, and Seros, does he's gonna get condemned into the wall. Kira's gonna destroy him. It was a cute little play, but there wasn't quite enough burst. <laughs> and that's gonna result in the Baron right now. I mean, Rain Brain is alive, but Mundo's not really gonna do too much running in here. He's nowhere near, actually. And the CIS squad can take out this Baron. This is pretty much going to spell the end of the game. Yeah, it's just, and it's serious tutorial style as well. It's like yeah. they went down, just managed to win a team fight, take the two inhibitors they'd prepared earlier, transition that up towards the Baron, grab a mid laner for their trouble as well. This seems like another day in the office here for the CIS. And one more time, Mundo not going to find success. So we have been speaking about the fact that, you know, the pick is very, very strong. This time around, once again, hasn't been the answer. I feel like it's, it's strong, don't get me wrong, but it has fundamental weaknesses. It's the same kind of weakness that I feel like Soraka has, is that you can kite fairly effectively with just any kind of disengaged composition. You look at the Gragas into the Mundo, you blast the rest of the team away, and what's Mundo gonna do? He actually can't close that <laughs> gap without hard engaged like a Malphite. It's the same like Soraka, has very very obvious strengths, has that ability to heal, yep. but denies any kind of engage from your support. And if you don't have that and can then follow up with the high damage targets that you're healing, it's so incredibly difficult to play in competitive. It works in solo queue because there is no communication, but in go the Japanese. Yeah, here's the fight. The Kali's going off at the end. Nice damage from Moeki. In goes the Unstoppable Force. Doesn't quite hit as many as he would have liked, but look at the damage from Kira. 8 0 and 5. It's a triple kill already for the victor. In goes Smurf. Saros in a bunch of trouble. Kira with the quadra kill. That's the ace, and that's going to be the game. 9 0 5. The immortal Kira. Four and two now for CIS at the end of the day. Two undefeated days in a row. CIS team doing a whole lot of work. A whole lot of work and a whole lot of wins, as you said. Oh, they yeah. started rough, but it has been a brilliant turnaround for the CIS squad. And what it's been all about is they talked about 